Good morning. Welcome to the online worship service of Aurora, Bradshaw, and Phillips United Methodist Churches. I want to thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience and remind you once again, we love to hear from you. We, we know this isn't a live interactive service, so you know, leave us some, some comments whenever you watch it. We'll pick those up and, and, and we'll, we'll, we will respond to you, but we thank you for being a part of this. Uh, one a couple of quick announcements before we get started. First of all, for those of you who would worship in Phillips, we are moving the worship service again, but this time we're, we're leaving it there. We'd initially moved it when we first started back to church after the shutdown in order to accommodate some things we thought were needed. Uh, but then we recently went back to its regular 11 o'clock time. But now we're sort of restructuring everything, and this change will be will be permanent, or as permanent as we can anticipate at this time, that so that Phillips will from now on be at nine o'clock, which was the time they they were a, a few years ago and have been for a very long time. So we hope that that uh, you appreciate this change, and we look forward to when when those of you who haven't been able to be. Uh, in church uh, in Phillips for the time when you feel like it's safe enough that, that you can once again be a part of our on-site worship. I want to make sure you know that that's going to be at 9 o'clock. Uh, also for all of you, this is of course the first Sunday of the month, which is our, our traditional communion Sunday. And so we will be holding communion in all three of our churches and we will be blessing the, the communion elements. Uh, which, because of the of the the pandemic, will still be our our little portable cups. That's the safest way we can think to to do it at this time. But for those of you who still aren't ready to go back to on site worship, still don't feel like this is the right time for you, uh, I want to invite you. Let us know. Call the church or call Pastor Michelle or or I, and let us know, and we will make sure that we get those blessed elements to you if, if that would be, if you would appreciate that. So just give us a call, and, and sometime during the week, we will, we will get those elements to you. Uh, so we're ready to, to start our worship time together. We're going to start in, in music with a song that is one of Pastor Michelle's favorites, and you know, right now we're just hopefully, I'm hoping that you've finished up the harvest or you're, you're very, very close and it's been a, a safe harvest and a plentiful harvest. And I, I don't know if you're, you, you're, you're supposed to say this in church, but I hope it's a profitable harvest for you. Uh, but this is a, a harvest song called Come Ye Thankful People Come.
took time and, and, and we prayed about all of the things that, that we know are out there. We know that we're still dealing with, with wildfires and, and ocean storms and, and the pandemic is, is starting to, to peak again. And of course, the, the tensions in and around the election seem to be heightening and I continue to invite you to, to every day, as often as you can, pray for for a, a peaceful day and a, and a peaceful moving forward of our country. But today, as Pastor Michelle is going to talk about, is a special day on the, on the church calendar. It's All Saints Day. Uh, it's a day when we, when we remember the saints who came before us, the people who, who loved us and, and that we loved, who, who taught us how to love God and, and, and taught us uh, about the love of Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to, we're going to focus our prayer time on that this morning. And I'm going to offer something a, a little different, offer a, a little prayer practice, something for you to, to try this morning. So in a moment, just before we start prayer, I'm just going to, to pause for a moment. Now, not long enough for you to do something, but it's video, so guess what? If you need to go do something, you can you can pause the video. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pause my my talking just long enough for you to pause your video, and then I'm gonna invite you to go find something that reminds you a photo album, a picture, whatever it is that reminds you of some of the saints in your life. As I said, not just people that that you loved and loved you, but the, those people in your life. Who, who taught you the love of God and, and, and taught you about the love of Jesus Christ. And, and then at the end of the prayer, I'm going, to, I'm going to pause again, not long enough for you to do this, but just long enough for you to, to stop the video for a moment and to take whatever you have and take as much time as, as is meaningful to you to, to reflect and to remember the love of God that you received through those saints in your life. And so I'm going to take a moment right now and, and just allow you to, to go get something, and then you can start the video back up, and we will start our prayer time together. And now let us join together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for your presence in our life. We give thanks for the gift of faith and hope that you offer to us. And God, on this All Saints Day, we give a special thanks for the gift of those saints who came before us, for those who brought us the stories of Jesus, the stories of, of your people, the, the, the stories of all of those in Scripture who show us what faith looks like, who give us teaching and guidance and, and an understanding of what it is to live as your people. God, we give you thanks for all of those people who came before your son Jesus Christ, those people who shaped the traditions and, 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 and recorded the law and, and built that community of faith that Christ was born into. 
And God, we give thanks for the disciples who, who traveled with Jesus and learned from Jesus and, and, and recorded those things and shared those things with people so that, so that the words and teachings of Jesus Christ would grow for those who first formed churches and congregations and, and brought together people in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we, we, we thank you for the, for the giants of the church, for those who, who gave us new ideas and new understandings, who helped shape what, what worship would look like, would, who helped us understand what it is to, to be a, a worshiping ministry body together, who brought us the traditions that created the churches in which we worship. God, we thank you for the people who, who founded these churches in, in, in Phillips and in Bradshaw and in Aurora and, and those generations who, who built the buildings, who, who, who ministered to these communities. We thank you for the Sunday school teachers and the, and the youth leaders and the, and, the, and the pastors and the other leaders in the church, for the, for the choirs over the generation, for all the musicians and all of those people who, who formed and shaped and brought these churches forward to us. And God, we thank you for the blessings of the people who were close to us in our lives to those who mentored us in the faith, to those who, who, who taught us, those in our family, those in the church, those in the community, who not only told us about the love of God and the love of Christ, but were so filled with your spirit that that love shined forth for, through them and we basked in that love, in your love, that was expressed so beautifully in them. God, we ask that you, you heal our hearts for those that we have lost and fill us with the hope of knowing that you embrace them in your arms. And God, help us to be mentors to others. Help us to take those lessons of the saints who came before and pass those on to, to the people around us, the people who you lay before us, that we might be uh, tools of your grace, that we might be a voice of your love. And now, God, we, we take a moment and we just reflect on some of the saints that, that were a part of our lives. I invite each of you out there to, to pause the video for a moment and just Reflect prayerfully on the saints of your life. And now we pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will continue as we, as we sing of the saints, as we, we sing the traditional Song of the Church for All the Saints. Thank you. 
Good morning. If you haven't been reminded by the daily and sometimes hourly texts and posts and phone calls, Tuesday, November 3rd is election day in the United States of America. According to those who speak publicly about such thing, if any person gets elected as our president, our country is doomed. The reality is that November 3rd will come and it will go and the sun will come up the next day and the world will continue to turn around us. You and I and everyone else will want to love and be loved. We we'll want to take care of people in our communities and, and we we'll want to have a purpose and find meaning in our lives. And the reality is that there still will be injustice there still will be poverty and hunger and all the kinds of problems that we have today, this day before the election. One of these days, maybe we'll come to realize that for another four years or eight years, our help doesn't come from the White House, but it comes from the Lord. So that brings me to our text for the message today from the book of Revelation in the seventh chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. Let's listen together for the word of God. After this, I looked and there was a great crowd that no one could number. They were from every nation, tribe, people, and language. They were standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They wore white robes and held palm branches in their hands. They cried out with a loud voice, Victory belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood in a circle around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell face down before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and always. Amen. Then one of the elders said to me, who are these people wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, sir, you know. Then he said to me, these people have come out of great hardship. They have washed their robes and made them white in the lamb's blood. This is the reason they are before God's throne. They worship him day and night in his temple and the one seated on the throne will shelter them. They won't hunger or thirst anymore. No sun or scorching heat will beat down on them because the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them. He will lead them to the springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Before there is election day, there is All Saints Day in the church. Sometimes people call it the church's Memorial Day because many of us will be naming the people in our congregations who have passed away in the last year, as I will at the end of this message for the three churches that Pastor Greg and I serve. In the bulletin, when we had a bulletin, and some still do, um, but many aren't using them right now, I might list on there naming of the saints. And as we hear those names, we remember the promise that they are united with those who have gone before them and that we will be reunited with them when it is our time. And we sing songs about the River Jordan and crossing through to the other side and that though it's the chilly Jordan, when we reach that other shore, we will have our eternal reward. When I stand at the head of a coffin at a graveside service, and some of you will have heard me say these words, I like to read from 1 Corinthians in the 15th chapter, where Paul writes, For this perishable body must put on imperishability. 
and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us victory in Jesus Christ. If you are watching this sermon today at home, you might hear a name when I read them that you know because you have gone to one of our churches or you were a neighbor to one of these people or maybe their relation. Maybe you're watching from another state though or even another country. That could happen. And you won't know any of the names that we have listed on our list of saints. Well, I'll tell you something. These are real people that I'm going to name with real stories and real lives. I know only some of them very much in depth, but I can imagine with each one of them what is likely. It's likely, for example, that maybe Ruth's name was stitched onto a quilt. Maybe put together for a pastor who'd served their church for many, many years and then was moving on to a new appointment. So the women got together and they, they made this quilt and they put all their names on it so that she would remember them when she lays it out on her bed. Or it might be that Delmer's name was at one time carved into the back of a cutting board that he'd made when he was in shop class at school as a young man for his mother. And she kept it for years and years, but she wouldn't use it because it was just too precious for her with his name on it and everything. It might be that Joanne's name will be written into a book at the church that lists memorials that were given in memory of her, as it happens in so many churches. For a painting, perhaps, or maybe her name will be written inside of a new book, a, a children's book, because she loved the children of the church so much, and she wanted something for the library that they could check out and read, and her name would be right there in loving memory. John of Patmos records, along with all of his other visions in the book of Revelation, a little back and forth he had with one of those elders who was one of those who stood around the throne in heaven worshiping God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and always. Amen. And this elder asks John, who are these people here with us? These who wear the white robes, where do they come from? John doesn't answer. Maybe he doesn't know who they are. It's such a great crowd, so diverse from every nation, from every tribe, from every country, speaking every language. How could he possibly name even one of the faces of the people in this crowd? He couldn't even see their faces. It's so big. All together, all singing the same song. There's never been a crowd like this in all his days on earth. Once in a while, Greg and I get out of this part of Nebraska and we travel to Lincoln or to Omaha or down to Wichita where we have some family. And while we are in these cities driving around, we encounter something that's called traffic. Do you know what that is? Yes, they even have it in Grand Island. And when we're stuck in this thing, we look at each other stopped behind some number of cars at an intersection where there are numbers of cars in every single direction stopped and waiting. And we look at each other and say, who are all these people? And where are they going? I used to think that the biggest crowd I'd ever been in was at the annual Wichita River Festival back in the old days when it was good. 
There were concerts and there were parades on the water, on the river, and on the land. And there were events and there were food booths and there was this huge art sale and it went on for two whole weeks. And my favorite was the very last concert where we would sit on the riverbanks with as much family as could come on the blankets and chairs that we would set up earlier in the day to mark out our territory on the riverbank. Because by the time the concert started, well, you could count on it. You, you couldn't walk from one place to another without stepping on one or another family's little blanket. You know, excuse me, excuse me. They'd all laid out their spots and there they all were. A huge crowd on the William Tell Overture would be played by the Wichita Symphony and the cannons would boom, and all the churches downtown would, would ring their bells and the fireworks burst overhead. What a crowd, what a spectacle. But I'm in Nebraska now, and I think a crowd at Memorial State Stadium might just eclipse any number of persons that I sat with on those riverbanks. Our crowd in heaven that John speaks of has a name, I believe, not given by John, but by the pastor who wrote a letter to his church in order to encourage them and to give them hope, to move them from their current crisis because it doesn't do well to live into crisis or chaos. And so he wrote, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that, sin that clings so closely. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus as the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. That's in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, the great cloud of witnesses. I have written it here on my iPad as I wrote my sermon with capital letters to indicate its importance to me. You see, in the United Methodist Church and in many others, we believe that all believers are saints. We believe that by the grace of God, not that we have done anything to earn this or the right to be called a saint, but that all are saints. In other traditions, there are people called saints who are particularly holy, who have been, again, by the grace of God, able to submit themselves fully to the will and the way of God and such that nothing of their ego functions anymore. You've heard their names, St. Paul or St. Peter, or St. Teresa of Avila, or St. Mother Teresa that we knew in our lifetime. These are saints not by any biblical means, but saints because they seem part of some sort of holy hall of fame. And they, they just might deserve that honor. And their stories are quite amazing to learn about, to know what they did and how they lived, how they lived out the gospel and how they inspired others to do the same. But our tradition is that at baptism, we are clothed in Christ. That's what the white robe stands for. And, and why most of the time you will see infants or children who are being baptized dressed all in white for this baptism. They are joining what has been called the priesthood of believers, all believers. The understanding that the redemptive work of Christ makes it possible for the people of God, all people of God, to offer their priestly sacrifice of obedient living. Here's the crowd in heaven before John, the great cloud, the priesthood of all believers. And the elder with whom John speaks says that they have been through great hardship. This must resonate greatly with John as he suffers in prison for his loyalty and dedication to the gospel. This must resonate for Christians of his time, many of whom were imprisoned and tortured and martyred 
for the sake of Christ by the Emperor Domitian, whose policies caused such great human suffering among the people. These before the throne in their white robes have had their hearts broken or their bodies. They have seen things no person, no man, woman, or child should ever have to see. They have borne incredible loss and grief. They have lived with shame or desperation or fear. Odd, isn't it? that this great number of people from all these different places all over the world stand before the Christ, the Lamb of God, the one who chose the way of suffering. Of all the other options for how to get through hardship as a human being, these chose a cross. They chose to die to themselves, to their egos, to their wills, their sense of what is right and wrong, in order to subject themselves to the eternal king who was crucified by the powers that be, who was shut up, who was put down. A failed cause, this way of love that Jesus spoke of, didn't make much sense. Foolishness weakness. But in all their lives, and here I'm remembering the ones that, that I know in that crowd, in all their lives they clung to Jesus, to this way, to the pioneer of their faith, to their light in the world. They washed their hands clean of anything else that the world might give them. And here they are, before God's throne, sheltered. They won't hunger or thirst anymore. No sun or scorching heat will beat down on them because they are with their shepherd and he leads them to life-giving water. And there are no more tears. What I hope you would see in this vision of John's, in this great crowd, are the faces of the people that you know. You can name them out loud if you'd like. You can pause this video and go and get a little piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, and you can write, I thank my God for all my remembrance of you, comma, and then write that name, the name of that saint that you have known, that has inspired you, that you have followed. And as I name those from our churches who are among that great cloud, that great crowd, read your names too. Though it is a great crowd, a great cloud, you know them. We remember today Lois Kreitz, Joanne Heinzman, Orlo Carriker, Marlene Crawford. We remember Ruth Simmons and Robert Troutman. We remember Jackie Kemling, Delmer Friesen, Shirley Hosier, Evelyn Zier. We remember Delpha Miller, Mary Beth Hansen, Dean Morgan, Vivian Alberts, Pat Oswald, and Don Burling. And we remember ever so many more saints. Amen. And now the peace of God go with you and with your family. May the peace of God follow you all of the days of your life that you might find yourselves at the throne of Christ at the end of your time and mine. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.